We have uh, just under 20 minutes left. We're going to try and finish a, a smidget early. We want to do questions and answers. Let me then uh, be a little bit more brief with my presentation than I ordinarily would be. If you have any questions, pop me an email, David Period Great Sir, Grad Sir, if you prefer, at camh.ca, C A M H.ca. I'm also on Twitter uh, um, uh, at David Greitzer, uh, and you can uh, tweet me or, or direct message me. Um, I want to build on what my colleagues have brought up today. Uh, Dr. Emer Doctors Emerson and Matt Wynn did a really good job of talking about the app evaluation that we developed uh, through the APA. And they went through some of the background thinking and went through a very detailed example. I want to go through a not so detailed example to pick up on Dr. Chan's point. You know, how can we pick and choose apps for our patients or, or help guide them as they choose for themselves? I'm going to pick Yoper and I'm going to run through this relatively quickly. By way of disclosure, I, I have no financial disclosures. I don't consult for industry. I do have some uh, funding for my work on e-therapies, which I'm going to talk about momentarily, um, and that's through government agencies, including CHR. Let me take a look at Yoper. Um, this is particularly of interest because I've had patients come to me and talk about Yoper. Uh, it is something that's considered cool and trendy. Um, and by the way, if you go to the website, you can download the app. It's free uh, and, and quite uh, quite slick. But if you go to the website, you see it's got an amazing website. And I can see why this may be attractive uh, to my patients, especially those who are interested in doing some work with an app. Uh, it's a website, well put together, and it also makes big claims. It claims that they use artificial intelligence, and that's always really interesting. They claim the millions of users, and they also suggest that they're clinically effective, that they can reduce depression symptoms um, in those who use this app uh, by 20% in just two weeks. Well, I'm in this business as are you. Uh, I'm a psychiatrist. I, you know, I don't claim that my antidepressants will work anywhere this quickly. I can refer people to CBT, but often they wait weeks, sometimes months before they see a therapist. So these are big claims. Uh, needless to say, as, uh, as, as several of my colleagues have discussed today, uh, COVID has made everything more at the fore. Bloomberg, uh, in, a, in an article about this app, suggests this is your, quote, pandemic therapist. Well. When a patient came to me and said, I'm interested in using this app, what did I respond? Well, first things first, I started to explore the app and there are things here I really like. One of them is that you do scales as you go through and you can track your progress. So here's an example of, of the anxiety and depression monitoring. I'm a big believer in measurement-based care. I think it's very empowering to patients and their families. Uh, and, and so that's immediately very likable and something done in real time. So I answer a few questions and I can immediately see a score. Um, it also has an ability for you to chat. It's a, a chat bot uh, to use the uh, uh, expression or uh, turn the expression or conversational agent. And it has a little bit of a twist on that for people who don't like to type a lot in that you can get answers at the bottom and you, you pick one as opposed to um, Wobot or Wiza where you would actually type in uh, full answers. Um, so in the interest of time, let's be utterly concrete for a moment. Should you recommend this app to a patient? What are things to think about? Let's go back to the uh, app uh, advisor. And let's, and by the way, point out that there are sample evaluations, including an evaluation of this app. One thing my colleagues didn't mention today when they talked about the uh, uh, APA's uh, app advisor uh, is that we've actually invited companies to respond to their evaluation. So as an example here, um, there's a, a question about uh, funding sources and conflicts of interest. And when we evaluated it uh, and put it on the internet, we suggested that there were no references noted. The company came back to us and said, in fact, there was funding available uh, on Crunchbase, uh, but not the app. Um, so let's think about those domains that we've looked at, access and background, privacy and safety, clinical foundation, usability, and therapeutic goal. I'm not going to run through everything, but let me instead pick on the one area that concerns me about this app, which I've identified with patients, clinical foundation. Um, you'll recall that Dr. Emerson walked us through this, and she had talked about you know, looking for some sort of an academic affiliation or evidence, ultimately a study would be nice, uh, that suggests that the app in fact works. Um, so when you actually look here on the website and you go through it, um, as we wrote, uh, it's unclear. 
There are no major studies that are apparent. The app and website mentions experts. Uh, so again, they suggest that 80% of people have shown uh, improvement uh, in their mood, uh, but they really can't justify that with, with anything in the literature, nor do they have an academic affiliation or anything of the sort. Um, of course, as I just pointed out, companies can uh, respond and the people who've developed Yelper uh, have pointed out that they have a preprint of a feasibility trial, um, which also has some in, uh, user feedback. So from the perspective of, of somebody who meets with patients who think about apps or some of them, um, you know, what's the evidence? What are things to think about? Um, you know, again, uh, we don't have a lot of evidence to support this app, despite some pretty amazing claims. A couple of other things, obviously, to think about with this app, as well as other apps, uh, is the, uh, the hidden fees. So when you start using it, while well, initially it's free, after a short period of time, it asks you uh, to pay. Uh, I have experimented with this app and I actually didn't find that so apparent the first time I used it. I apologize for the lighting. We're having a, a setting sun here to, in, uh, in Toronto that's, uh, uh, that's quite bright. I'm going to pivot for a moment uh, in, in picking up on our, our theme of this third part about practicality. I want to talk about ways that apps have helped us help patients. In particular, I want to focus on evidence-based uh, treatments, uh, particularly internet cognitive behavioral therapy. I only have a few minutes and we want to take your questions. So again, there are no disclosures. Um, we all know that cognitive behavioral therapy has played a more and more prominent role in mental health care uh, in the last number of decades. Cognitive behavioral therapy comes from the work of Aaron Beck and others. Uh, on the right of the screen, you see a picture of Aaron Beck, who's recently turned, what, 97, and he wears a smashing bow tie. Uh, for sure, we know that cognitive behavioral therapy has implications for mood and anxiety problems, but we also know uh, a growing appreciation of CBT. Uh, here's a, a man paper from a, a number of years ago, Elizabeth Mann, uh, that looked at uh, women who are undergoing uh, significant chemotherapy as part of the treatment for advanced breast carcinoma, and they actually found that these uh, women who engaged in cognitive behavioral therapy got fewer of the chemo side effects, including flashbacks, that they felt better overall, and most importantly, Importantly, they were more likely to continue with the chemotherapy uh, than others. Um, cognitive behavioral therapy, if one were to use the uh, European uh, term, the number needed to treat is, is really low when you talk about conditions like generalized anxiety disorder or depression or PTSD, very low by the standards of physical medicine, uh, where a lipid lowering drug and an MI might be uh, 95, whereas when you talk about generalized anxiety disorder, it might be 2.3. Many people across the Western world, I'm speaking today from Canada, but it's true in the United States and in other countries, have difficulty getting access, which is the attractiveness, of course, about providing something internet delivered. Lots of work has been done in the field, and there's also some government experimentation in Sweden, uh, in Saskatchewan, here on the Canadian prairies, and of course in Australia. Um, to quickly summarize the vast literature, this is, of course, from uh, the, uh, the Thays paper, which might be the most important in the field. Six-month follow-up, and we find uh, that patients who did uh, the computer's cognitive behavioral therapy were statistically no different and certainly no worse off than those who did it in person. Andrews uh, did a meta-analysis. Again, uh, if you look at the plot diagram, you see there's a, a lot of black squares uh, on the right of the intervention side. It's fun to talk about apps. Let me take just a couple of moments to talk about some of the apps that incorporate some CBT. Again, I've got no disclosures. Uh, this is a phobia free, which is developed by a British uh, psychiatrist. Uh, and it's for people who have an arachnophobia or fear of spiders. Uh, and you can see it's a way of doing exposure therapy without actually having any spiders. Uh, on the left, you've got a cartoonish spider uh, with a pretty clever looking top hat. Uh, on the right uh, of your screen, uh, you've got one of those spiders that you can evolve to as you go through the CBT, which looks vastly more realistic. I had a patient who was a security guard who did had day who would, uh, would switch from day shifts to night shifts and suddenly discovered there, there are a lot of spiders in warehouses and she had arachnophobia. She used this and was able to continue working. Uh, we've talked about the, the coat series from VA. Here's CBDI Coach, which is for those with insomnia. Wonderful uh, app, which is free at the point of use. Something you can access at different levels. Certainly you can use it just for psychoeducation and to do some very basic sleep hygiene. You can also do the CBT aspects uh, where you have the worry hour uh, and so on. Um, I've experimented with this app. It, it, it's really a well done app. 
Of course, one should recognize that we are enthusiastic about these apps and enthusiastic about bridging some of those access issues. So if you have a patient in rural Nebraska, as Dr. Emerson may have, uh, you, know, you can suggest an app for their insomnia. I work in downtown Toronto, but there are tremendous difficulties getting access to psychological therapies. And so I might suggest to them ICBT uh, through one of these apps. But hold on, uh, we should also mention that there are problems uh, amongst them, uh, uneven results in the literature, Mood Gym, which as you know, is the most popular website, which has a, an app version, which isn't too sophisticated, but, but the CBD itself is really thoughtful, translated in Chinese characters into Finnish and other languages, has incredibly high dropout rate. And you see that when you look, for instance, at React, which is the British study where family doctors uh, prescribed an app but did no follow up and there were no therapists involved. In fact, the big difference in the literature is between those uh, that uh, internet delivered cognitive behavioral therapy uh, modules that have some therapist connection uh, versus those that don't have a therapist, the former being so superior, I guess at the end of the day, computers and, and programs are great, but there needs to be some thread of humanity uh, for them to work. Um, obviously, these things are, are going to continue to change their strong winds. If one speaks of an American context, pairs, be it government or employers, uh, have a great interest uh, in uh, these uh, types of therapies that are evidence-based, but not necessarily resource heavy. The other thing too that's changing is the technological advancement, uh, which Dr. Chan had given hints of. AI would be something very exciting where maybe we'd move away from colorful graphics and good videos, but into a, a system where the app uh, would actually learn the patient and come up with some sort of evidence-based uh, treatment that was tailor-made to her or his needs. That is the end of our uh, formal presentation. We do have a, a bit of time at, at the end for questions. Uh, and of course, I should mention uh, some additional resources here, uh, including, of course, the App Advisor uh, Expert Panel work and, of course, uh, the sample evaluations. Uh, and, uh, of course, no academic presentation is, is ever completed without a slew of references that you couldn't possibly read, but make me feel that we've been inclusive of everything. And with that, I will uh, stop sharing my screen. Um, and I will uh, invite my colleagues to rejoin me on the screen.